Hey, good morning to you. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hello to everyone here on YouTube. Now, we have something really big coming, and it's seen by GFS, Euro as well. And I'm not talking about this next storm that we're getting. We're talking about something big, and we've been seeing it here on this channel for quite some time. And I think this is really going to be something very big, guys. So please pay attention. All right, first of all, this is our velocity potential anomaly. Let's you know when we have some strong velocity cyclones coming into our region. And once again, our region is 120W West Coast to 60W East Coast. And as you can see, we still have this storm that is coming from the 21st all the way down to the 23rd and 24th, being strongest around the 22nd, 23rd, mostly Friday afternoon. And this next system that is coming, still showing it's at the end of April, Beginning of May when we have this next big cold front we've been talking about here. And so far, GFS is not showing it super strong. Now, it is strong. It's not going to be a very weak system. But when you look at the Euro, you can see the anomaly that we are getting on the 21st to the 24th. Not showing it super strong neither. But look what the Euro sees this next system becoming. Very huge. This is something we see normally during hurricane season. And it's towards the end of April, beginning of May a very strong anomaly. And when you look at your Arctic oscillations, which lets you know when we have cold air coming down, all these cold fronts, you can see we still have this cold front coming down from the 21st all the way to the 25th. This is two little systems, one going to the upper Midwest, going into Canada, snowfall for northern Minnesota, as well as that second big system that's coming from the 22nd, 23rd, and possibly the 24th also snowfall in upper midwest then the cold air is going to retract back we are going to be in a warm-up after that mostly from the center to the east side of the u.s we still have that cold air that's going to be on the west side of the u.s but as you look as we go into beginning of the may another cold front is still coming in and it has shown it even deeper before it has shown it going away before but it's consecutively still showing that it's coming down in the beginning of may in a very deep cold front Deeper than anything we've dealt with yet. And this is seen by GFS and Euro. And GFS is seen that it is a big trough. Our outages as well. And when this next storm that comes it gets at its strongest, it will be Friday afternoon. And National Weather Service has put this 15% and it has relocated a little bit, a little less of Iowa. So from Friday the 22nd to Saturday the 23rd, your cities and states now at threat for the severe weather is Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Sioux City, Iowa, Grand Island, Nebraska, Kearney, Nebraska, and Garden City, Kansas. And it's not only going to be the severe weather. I'm showing we have a big flash flooding problem that's coming right after this storm. So Friday by 1 o'clock till 7 o'clock, that's when it's really going to be severe. You have your lightning strikes coming in by 1 p.m. As you go towards 4 p.m., it is really going to climb all the way towards Nebraska, South Dakota, all this white has chances for very large hail as well as you go towards 7 p.m. And it strengthens up, broadens out, and then it has all the way to Iowa with this white being chances for heavy hail. Just be aware of that. And you can see this here when you look just for the thunderstorms, not for just everything in general. The worst of the thunderstorms. And by 1 p.m. on Friday, it's going to start stretching from northern Texas going towards Kansas. But as you go towards 4 p.m., it's really going to stretch up all the way from northern Texas all the way towards Nebraska, even portions of South Dakota. That's when it's at its strongest, a 989. Then as it goes a little later, it's going to fan out and spread even further north. So just be aware there will be a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of severe weather that is coming on Friday. Then it's going to fan out, go to the upper Midwest, Bring you all your snowfall, bring you your rain, and bring some damage and winds as well. And so far, the wind gust is going to be 50 and 60 for Arizona, New Mexico, as it goes up on this curve. And when it goes on that high ridge all Friday afternoon, you're going to get more 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts all night long and even into Saturday morning. This is going to bring a lot of damage and winds and wind gusts with it. Just be aware, there's a lot of winds coming. But what's coming after that is going to be a lot of flooding. And higher elevations could see hurricane force winds in the 70s. We're talking about Colorado, Nebraska, New Mexico. Highest is 79 so far. And this is by the Euro. And usually the Euro downplays it a little bit like National Weather Service until it gets a little bit closer. And it sees very high winds. 
Now, when you look at your precipital water, you can see how you got this high pressure just over here circling all this Gulf Coast moisture, and it's pulling way up into our country. And as you go into Friday, it will go way up. But right after that, it's going to come down, and it's going, the high pressure is going to move further to the east towards the Atlantic, and it's going to pull this moisture over the center of the U.S. and down to the south. Now, this will bring a lot of rainfall. And by Saturday afternoon, there's a lot of good precipitation amounts. A lot of y'all are going to be seeing the snowfall. We got heavy amounts of rainfall, especially for Iowa, anywhere from two inches on the west side to four and five inches on the east side. But right after that, when this high pressure moves to the east, it's going to pull all this moisture further south. And all this moisture is going to be training for hours. So by Tuesday and Wednesday, we're talking major flooding. And it's showing very heavy for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, eastern Kansas, as well as Missouri. Missouri, so far, it looks like you in Oklahoma and northern Arkansas is in the hot spot for major flooding coming. And this heavy rainfall will go into the Ohio Valley as well. It will weaken down as it goes, but a lot of rainfall is coming. Please heed this warning. You can also see that when this rainfall comes, you will be getting a lot of snowfall out of it. Not much freezing rain, not much ice. But right after that, comes all that heavy rainfall because of the high pressure is moving and all this moisture that's circling around this high pressure is all going towards Texas and towards Illinois, a big pocket. But there is going to be a lot of major snowfall on that storm as well. So far it's showing Montana, Wyoming, Dakotas, major snowfall, chance for over a foot. And that first storm is bringing just a little bit towards northern Minnesota. That second one, the one that I'm talking about, 21st through the 25th, is bringing that major snowfall. And as we get towards the end of April, you can see with the GFS, when you look at your 500 millibar velocity, that this cold front does come way down with a very deep trough. And it starts building up in the northeast. And it gets all the way to the northeast with a very big system that could be brewing and bringing big time problems. And it's not just the GFS. The Euro sees this as well. As you get that very big trough towards the end of the month, it will consolidate and go towards the northeast. And so far, the GFS shows that this could go towards the northeast and go into the Atlantic and just sit there and spin and strengthen up the whole time for days. Even the Euro sees this a little bit further east, but it sees it bigger and it does see a system in the northeast as well. It shows multiple systems can come out of that. Not only that big, huge hurricane force system that's going to be in the Atlantic, but it will be one in the northeast as well. And so far, according to the potential velocity anomaly, this is going to be a little bit further to the west. So if all this consolidates, this could be a very nasty storm. I will keep you updated. For those that still tune in to me, please heed my warning. But there's been a lot of evil going on, guys, and I don't want to let you know what's going on. You should know your Bible and see it yourself. Your eyes are open just like mine. Just remember, anything that has an evil heart always wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, we'll keep you updated on what's going on. I want to read something to you that verifies what I'm saying. Now, it's a little bit longer than normal, but you should always have time for God's word. So please take a minute and listen, please. I beg you. John 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers." This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As a father knoweth me, even so know I the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doeth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil, and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple of Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long doest thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it is not written in your law, I said ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him, whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand, and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. Amen. And to all those that I spoke privately through email, please keep our discussions private, for what the future brings and what I told you is between us. For others do not care but you know what's going to happen. 
God bless you all. May you all have a very blessed Tuesday out there. I hope you have a great day at school, a great day at work. May you all just have a great day. In all power. All honor. All glory. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. Our Father. He's going to return. Are you ready? I know I am. Fully committed. Don't be of this world. For this world is evil. So this world attracts and lifts up evil people. Be of heaven. Be not of this world. For that's where you're from. That's where you belong. God has a plan for all of us. Trust in him. Don't trust in man. Man will deceive you and leave you abandoned. God will not. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very, very great day today.